Marry me. Go on, Susie. I hold you. I love how you squeeze me. Yes, please. No, it's a clue. Horseman with bridal, but it's spelled B-R-I-D-A-L. Bridal groom, thanks. Glad I'm useful for something. Oh, I'm sure Susie will find you useful for lots of things. Carpentry, plumbing, painting and decorating. She'll be the foreman and you the unpaid labourer. Yeah, go on, rub it in. It'll happen. Well, you'll be the cheery best man, I must say. What do you mean? I need a best man. Well, me? Am I the best you can get? We're pals and... I don't trust any of your other mates. They'd lose the ring and drink up all the booze. I need someone I can depend on. But you make me sound like a bank manager. Oh well, if you're that desperate, it'll be an honour. Right, first thing, stag do. I was thinking, Friday night upstairs at the pub. Friday evening, upstairs in the pub, one hen night, done and dusted. Oh, it doesn't take her long, does it? Not ironic. Trying to connect you. Guess where I'm going? Darlington. Putting you through. Paris. Mike's off to write an article about this common market, and I have been classified as travelling secretary. Oh, you look as stiff. That's honeymoon territory. Here, how'd you get hold of a passport? Oh, well, you need a birth certificate for starters. Well, I can't ask my mum for that, can I? Auntie Helen. She did all the paperwork after Mum died. I'll ask her. Good idea. Trying to connect you. You can just see her up the awful tar. Oh, dancing the can can and eating garlic. <laughs> How would you like to be down by the sea with me? <laughs> oh, what I'd give for a moment or two under the bridges of Paris with you. Miss Ferrara, remember where you are. I am well aware that there may be cause for celebration. But we must never drop our standards of correct behaviour. An ideal, Miss Sands, but your sister Joy epitomised. Try and follow her example. My perfect sister. Never at the end of her. I'd like to shut Annie Armitage up in a room with Fidel Castro. He wouldn't last five minutes. <laughs> What I give for a moment or two under the bridges of Paris with you, darling, I'll hold you tight off from the eyes of night. Well, it's not just something you can lay your hands on, Sylvie. How come? A place for everything and everything in its place, you always say. That's more for the cutlery, love. Auntie, it's my birth certificate. I need it. It must be with Mum's papers. That may be, but would your mother have approved, Sylvia? Paris, 
with a man. Who do you want me to go with, an elephant? Don't be cheeky, Sylvie. Oh, for goodness sake. It's your welfare I'm thinking about. I can look after myself. That is a matter of opinion. I can make my own decisions, Auntie. I'm not a baby anymore. No one's saying you are, but nevertheless... Nevertheless what? I want you to think about it seriously. Oh, look, I've got to get back. OK. I promise that I will think long and hard about Paris if you promise to find what belongs to me in any case. And is that all you're having for lunch? An apple? If it's good enough for Eve, it's good enough for me. See you soon, Auntie. Well, if it comes to the point when we'll have to tell the truth and face the consequences, it was always bound to happen. Keep me in touch with the situation. That's all right. Goodbye. Hey, listen to this. Birth control pills will shortly be available to women via the National Health. That's Sylvia banging on the door, Doctor. <laughs> I think Aunt Helen thinks I'll swallow them by the bucket load. She's not that bad. You didn't see her face. I expect she's worried that if you get some pie-eyed in Paris, you might drop your standards. Well, a bit late for that. <laughs> What's the matter with you? More like a funeral than a wedding. Oh, it's just the Blamongin and the Armitage. They want to pop in on the end night. I can't see them in the pub, can you? No problem, then. Tea and cakes at our flat, and then on to the pub later. Oh, Ronnie, you're a genius. Isn't she, Chris? Come on, girls. Back to the cold face. Perfect operator. Sylvia, I am afraid, is not quite the same quality. Different generation. It was such a wrench when Joy left us. Australia. Aunt Mabel, conspicuous by her absence, is she? Seven weeks. And I feel that funny, I can't even look at a baby show. Johnny and I have been talking and I didn't want him to feel he had to, but bless him, he just... Pop the question. <laughs> oh, Chris. Oh. oh, you'll be fine. You've got a good man. He'll have a little baby. It's not the end of the world, more like the beginning. You're a lucky girl, Susie. But what am I going to tell my mum? Tell her you've joined the club. <laughs> oh, you'll be fine. Just Oh, there's a lot of it about. Mm. Must be catching. Wedding fever. <laughs> <laughs> you ever thought about it? Of course. What girl doesn't? <laughs> yes, I did once. Seriously. What happened? Well, this fella, Dick Mandeville. He was going out to the Middle East. Engineer, good money. He wanted me to marry him, be his wife. That's all I would have been, his wife. Not myself, not me. I'd have been like a, well, like a trophy. Something on his arm to show off. Doesn't sound too good. I thought I was in love with him, but when it came to the point, I knew it was wrong. Well, it was like a dream, and you can't marry a dream, can you? No, you can't. That's a big mistake. So they tell me.
There was this girl at school. Childhood sweetheart, you know. I thought she was the one. Well, we drifted apart. So, we're both footloose and fancy free. I wouldn't have it any other way. Neither would I. <laughs> New barmaid Barbara. She's got two speeds. Dead slow and stop. Mind you, you can't have everything. I'm sure I don't know what you mean. It's all settled. Two quid each. Two quid? That covers everything. Tea, cakes, frilly underwear. What more do you want? Am I missing out on something? No, it's just stuff for Susie's hen night. Presents and that. Chris and I have been shanghaied into using the flat, and now we've got to pay as well. Not been your day? No. Aunt Helen, as soon as I mentioned Paris, alarm bells all over the place. Maybe you shouldn't have mentioned it. I'm not telling lies. She seems to think it's all a plot so you can have your wicked way. Tell her it's more a meeting of minds. She wouldn't believe me. I wonder why. Strictly between you and me, I'm quite looking forward to Paris. Confidentially speaking, so am I. But no passport, no getting on that plane. Didn't look too promising. Her face. So? All right, plan B. Key to the door. Every Friday she's off to the shops and I know where she keeps all her papers. Top of the wardrobe behind the spare pillows. Are you going to steal your own birth certificate? It's mine anyway. What are you up to, Fruity? Nothing yet. But tomorrow I may indulge in some petty larceny. <laughs> Auntie? Was she going to do something at lunch? Nothing. Except to spot a burglary. Eh? The line is engaged, Cora. Would you like to hear it? He told me she was my sister. It was the war, love. Everything was upside down. And then we didn't know what to do for the best. So your gran decided that she would take over. And my mother? Joy. She just dumped me off, did she? Passed the parcel? No, not at all. She was heartbroken. We didn't stop her running off to Australia, though. She had her life in front of her. What about my life? Does anyone else know? Only Miss Marriott at the exchange. When it, at the time, she was very supportive. I'll bet she was. Anything to protect her bloody perfect little joy. Don't swear, Sylvia. How could you? You especially, Auntie, I loved you the best. When I was a kid, I was in and out of here every day of my life, and you lied to me. It was for your own good, Sylvie, for the best. You have to believe me. I don't believe anything, anything you tell me. All of you lying to me, laughing at me, knowing of me, not knowing all of you. I hate you, I hate you all. <laughs> Miss Married.
So there is nothing to worry about. Miss Sands' aunt has informed me that it was merely some family business which had to be dealt with, hence her non-arrival. Will she be back today, Miss Marriott? I doubt it. In the meantime, I trust that with hard work and industry, you will all no doubt be able to compensate for her absence. Yes, Miss Marriott. Yes, Miss Marriott. Miss Cross, when is our little gathering this evening? Seven o'clock, Miss Marriott. If I am by any chance late, please commence without me. I wonder what's wrong. Lord knows. I hope she makes it for tonight. Lan is engaged, Caller. Would you like to hold? Very Japanese, eh? eh? Your flower arranging. Catch. We're never going to make it. No, we're not, are we? You should have thought about that before. Before what? Before you put us up for this. I was trying to help. You never even asked what Sylvia and I thought. Not we're all together. Not the three musketeers, you know. All right, all right. I promise I'll ask next time. Good Lord. The flying pig just passed our window. Did you see it? Circumstances were exceptional. The war, you mean? Yes. When in doubt, blame the war. No. But events were shaped by it. I was an event, was I? Joy lost her young man most cruelly. She was crushed by it. Her whole world collapsed. I've never seen such a change in a person. So when I was born, she didn't want me? She hadn't the strength for motherhood and all that it entailed. She left. I don't remember waving her off. The intention was that once Joyce settled in Australia and recovered herself, then she would send for you. But she didn't, did she? No. She met someone, married, and started a family. I believe her husband is a man of strong views, and she was afraid that if you were brought into the equation, it wouldn't work. But it's everything for her. Everything for Joy. What about me? I don't give a damn about a new life. She's my mother. And she left me. Never held me, never loved me, nothing. I'm not trying to excuse her, Sylvia. I'm merely telling you the circumstances. The truth as I know it. Finally. Finally, everybody's telling me the truth. Do you know what hurts? What kills me, Miss Marriott? My auntie, my grandmother. I loved them. And they told me lies. No. Your aunt and your grandmother sacrificed a great deal. If it hadn't been for them, who knows what might have happened. They gave everything so that you would be happy. You were held. You were loved by them. When your grandmother died, your aunt was beside herself to know what to do. So she did nothing. I advised her to wait. Perhaps I was wrong. Perhaps she should have told you there and then. But she loves you. No one better. In your heart, you must know that. I always hoped that Joy would take that decision, to tell you, rather than someone else. Nobody told me. I found out all by myself. Could I be alone now, please? If, um... If there's anything I can do. Oh, oh, it's lovely. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. I'm sure it'll get Johnny's seal of approval. Especially on the honeymoon. <laughs> yes, but Susan, there is one thing on your honeymoon which is essential to remember. What's that, Miss Armitage? Postcard. Don't forget to send a postcard. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
hello, stranger. Sylvia, what do you think? <laughs> Lovely. Hey, what about your problem? Hey? Nothing serious, I hope. No, just my aunt. She came over poorly all of a sudden. Oh, is she better now? Yeah. She's on her own, you see, that's the trouble. But it all turned out for the best. Do you fancy a cup of tea? No, thank you. Well, I'd, I'd just like to say thank you to, to Sylvia, to Chris, and especially to Ronnie for, for laying on this lovely treat on my behalf. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Well, I suppose we all ought to be making a move. Yes. I don't want to get into Simmons. Come on, you two. Uh, we'll catch you up, Ron. Right. See you in a minute. Now then, fruity. How about that cup of tea? Upstairs room already? Well, it was, but it's full now. What? Johnny Stag night. But I booked it last week. Who are you with? That new girl, Barbara. I'm sure everybody did what they thought was best. Maybe. But I wasn't in on it. I wasn't asked. And I wasn't told. No, that was wrong. I feel so dirty, as if they were all ashamed of me. Oh, of course they weren't. But that's how I feel, as if it's all my fault. And then I'm so angry with joy, I could just I'm cut down the middle. I feel so, so mixed up. <laughs> yeah. That's me. Crazy mixed up kid. Oh, come here. <gasps> oh, Christine. The whole world's gone mad. And I don't know what to do. What does your heart say? <sighs> Help. <laughs> I want to talk to her, Joy, but I'm scared. I want her to say she's my mum and that she loves me, but maybe she won't. Oh, who couldn't love you, you great big dope? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think I should talk to her? Do what your heart says. I'll be there for you, whatever happens. But I think you should sleep on it first. Oh, God, yes. No, I can sleep. No. I'm so shaky, I couldn't dial the number anyway. I'll tell you something. I wouldn't say no to a large gin and tonic. I know just the place. Oh, can you believe it, that dozy barmaid? Everybody seems happy enough. We did get a free round out of it. Yeah. We were just meant to be down here. It was fate, Ronnie. Kismet. Kismet Marbach size. <laughs> <laughs> and let's face it, you have been pushing your luck lately, have you not? Take your car. <laughs> Go on. I'll be fine. How's it going? Fine. How about you? Oh, boozy, belchy, bursting at the seams. Sounds lovely. Sorry about the mix-up. Oh, don't worry. How's Johnny getting on? Well, he's all right so far. At least I haven't covered him in boot polish like somebody I once knew. That's barbaric. No, just City of Leeds. No wonder you left the place. Oh, there's no comparison. Derby's got the edge every time. Seen me alone. Best get back. I'll see you later. Yeah. Dave? In the park. Oh, it was really nice. Eric! This is Eric 
like everybody, and he's looking for pin-up girls. Hey girls, right, they're building this one, please. Let's get nice and close in there. Hey, okay, right, say sex, everybody. <laughs> right, ready, steady. Joy? It's me, Sylvie. Well, yes. No, no, she's fine. Aunt Helen's fine. Joy? I know. <laughs> How'd it go for you, Keep things tidy. Every Saturday, creature of habit. I was on my way to see you. Well, not see. Just drop this off. You'll need it for Paris. I'm so sorry, Sylvie. You've nothing to be sorry for. I'm lucky to have you. Oh, I spoke to Joy. Oh, right. Well, that must have been... Uh... Terrifying. I've never been so scared in my life. She said... She said she loved me. And that she was so sorry. And then I was sorry, and she was sorry, and we didn't make much sense after that. We're going to write and talk. Talk and write. Take things slow. She's going to get her nerve up. Tell her husband. Sure, it won't be that bad. I hope so. And if it is, she'll just have to clout him one. <laughs> <laughs> Are you finished here? Yes, all shipshape and correct. Come on then. If I do get to Paris, I'll send you a cheeky postcard. Don't you dare. Send me one of the Eiffel Tower. Some people think that's very cheeky. Sylvia Sands! <laughs> do you fancy a cup of tea in town? We can eye up the talent together. I'm game if you are. I'd like to know about your love is a love I can be sure of. You can see the last in this series of the lives and loves of the Hello Girls at the same time next week here on BBC One. I won't ask again. Will you still